Hey, Blake Rudis here with Everyday HDR and HDRinsider.com. And today you might be wondering why we're looking at a goofy picture of me in a goofy Christmas onesie jumpsuit pajama thing. Well, it's because my wife conned me into it for our family picture for our Christmas card. No, I'm just joking. I, I actually consented to it. I don't know why. But anyway, that's not the premise of this tutorial. The tutorial is how to make a frame. So we're looking at this two-dimensional frame that's stock right here in Photoshop. Doesn't look like a real frame, just looks like a border. And how you can take that two-dimensional object and make it look three-dimensional in Photoshop to appear as if it is a frame. All right, so let's jump into Photoshop and start working on this. I think I might make this my profile picture. So every year at Christmas time, we do the epic Rudis family Christmas card. And this is one of, this is a tradition that my wife and I started when we got married. Um, you know, it was just the two of us, but you know, we were on the beach and everyone else was doing their Christmas cards. So we figured, well, we'll do our own family Christmas card. And it, it was, it was fun. So we made every Christmas card fun and that's what we did this year. So what I want to show you in this tutorial is not how to make this Christmas card because it was about, I don't know, 67 layers or something like that. It was crazy how many layers it took to create this. But I want to show you more specifically how to make that frame in the background. And it's really simple to do in Photoshop. You just have to know what to tweak. So when I was making this, I was like, you know what? I want us to, you know, every night what we do is, uh, you know, the kids know that they, they take a bath and then after the bath, they get a snack. And after the snack, they read a book. And then after we read a book or two or three, sometimes we then uh, brush your teeth and then they go to bed, you know? So we wanted to kind of showcase our kind of family tradition here in our pajamas. Now my wife conned me into these onesie pajamas. Okay. So let's get into how to make this frame enough about our uh, Christmas card here. So what I have here is the picture of myself, the goofy picture of myself. You know, we wanted that traditional nice picture the, in the foreground, but then our personality showcased in the frames above us. So what I need to do is make a frame for this. And one of the things that I was trying to do, I was going around my house and I was taking pictures of all the different frames that I have. And I was trying to figure out a way to put it uh, with our image, but it just didn't look right. So I went into Photoshop and Photoshop actually has frames right there built into your custom shapes. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go right here. If you click right here, this is going to show you your custom shape tool. Okay. So we're going to go down to that custom shape tool and then inside here, click up here, up here is going to have all the different shapes that are available with Photoshop. And I have some extra shapes here, these gear shapes and some other shapes that I've, uh, gotten from all different various places. So you have all these different shapes here. If you, if you click right here, this is the frames package. If you don't have frames, go ahead and click frames. And it's going to ask you, do you want to replace the current shapes with the frames or do you want to append it? Just go ahead and go to append. It'll put it right at the bottom. I have all my shapes loaded. It just makes life a lot easier. But then down here, you'll see all the different shapes of the frames that are available in uh, Photoshop. So let's go ahead and click this one right here. I like this shape. So double click this shape and then we'll make this shape. Okay, so I'm just going to make the shape of this frame right here. Okay, looks good. All right, now I don't quite fit into that frame, but we're going to fix that. Okay, but before we fix that, let's take a look at the options that we have up here. This is the fill. If we don't have any fill, all you're going to see is the outline of the shapes. Okay. And then right here, you're going to see the stroke path. Now you can make a different stroke path to go around it without a fill. All right. So let's just go ahead and select fill and we'll fill that with a brownish color and then we'll take our stroke path off completely. So at this point, what I'm ready to do is uh, build this frame to make it actually look like it's got depth and curvature and it's been carved and chipped away. It's a piece of wood that I can go ahead and work with here. But before I do that, I have to adjust my size of my head. So I'm going to click on this one. This folder has the me folder. This has got my frequency separation in it. It's got a uh, curves adjustment layer that's kind of giving me some highlight spill here on my face. And then it's got uh, my image there and then more with the background here, this little background image that we have uh, kind of back here behind me that's within the frame. Okay. So that's all the different pieces here. I tell you a lot of stuff goes into these Christmas cards. Okay. So I'm going to press commander control T on this entire folder. What that's going to allow me to do is grab this and pull it down. If I press and hold shift, it'll maintain aspect ratios so that my face doesn't get all uh, squished like this. So press and hold shift to maintain the aspect ratio. And then we'll just go ahead and bring that right in here somewhere. I'm going to make this slightly larger so that my background fills the entire frame. 
And then you'll see behind us, we have that brick background like we saw in the Christmas card. So now what we need to do, I'm gonna go ahead and just fit this on the screen again, is make a place for this. So you see that my stuff is spilling all over the place outside this frame, and it's really simple to do. We're just gonna grab this marquee tool and then grab right in here anywhere within the frame, it doesn't have to be perfect. And then we'll just grab right here and make a mask. And that will basically mask everything else out. The beauty of a mask like this is if I unlink this, if I click this unlink option here, I can now move, I press the V key and I can move my picture within that, that pre-selected mask that's been stuck there. So I can make my composition essentially for what I want my image to look like of me on the inside. So I will slightly offset it, you know, to get that uh, fourth the rule of thirds kind of look there. So that looks about right to me. So now let's get into building this frame, okay? Because that's what we want to do. We want to make the beveled and embossed edge on here. So I'm going to double click inside this shape and I'm going to click bevel and emboss. So right there, you think, oh, wow, perfect. I got a perfect frame. Uh, that's what I thought too, until I started digging a little bit deeper here. So let's go ahead and just manipulate some of these settings here. It's not really right now. I'm not too worried about this because I want to build the contour first. So let me make this depth slightly small and the size slightly small so that I have something I can work with here. And now the contour, this is where the magic happens. We can change our contour. And as you change the contour, this is essentially saying, okay, um, you've created the depth. Now, how do you want me to carve this? So you're basically using what looks like a curve adjustment layer to carve out the inside of the frame, which is actually extremely powerful. I had so much fun doing this. So let's click on something like this one. I like this one. We'll double click on this one. And if you look at the range here, you can make that uh, larger and smaller depending on how you want that cut to be. So let's go ahead and make that range slightly larger right about there and then double click inside this contour. Now at this point, I have the opportunity to go ahead and manipulate and add points anywhere I want to to this frame. So as I start making these points on this frame, you start to see that I'm starting to create the depth and the carving that's happening in this frame. Okay, so it's kind of like I'm a woodworker, but I'm not. I'm actually just hanging out in Photoshop, just carving and chiseling in this frame to make it look exactly like I want. I want it to look realistic. I want it to have this sense of uh, craftsmanship to it. So that's why I'm making this frame this way. Okay, and this is really all on how you want to manipulate this. Just make note that when I make a dot here, and I move this up and down, certain things are gonna happen to my frame. This is the chiseling and the carving, okay? And we can get pretty in depth with this and, and keep making points and adding points if you'd like to, but we'll just go ahead and leave it at that. Now let's go back to the bevel and emboss settings because here's where you can start adding the depth to those little intricate little details that you've added there. You can increase the size of them so that you get these really big thick blocks or you get more of a small type of shape. Up and down is the direction of which you're carving. If we have it set to up, it appears as if we're carving into the frame. When we set it to down, it looks as if it's popping out of the frame. So if you want the inlet look or if you want the popped out look, you get to dictate that as well. I'm going to select up because I like how it looks like it's being carved into the wood. And then you have your highlight modes here. So if we wanted to increase this highlight mode, you can make it look like it's a really glossy frame or maybe it doesn't have any gloss on it at all. That's up to you. And you can also dictate the direction of which that light is going to be resting on here. So if you're building up this composite, this is really important. If you're building up the composite of all these frames like you saw in the Christmas card that I had here, you can use the global light or you can allow light to spill in different directions by unchecking global light. This is an important where like with this image, it looked like the light was coming from the center. So I had to uncheck the global light option so that all of them didn't look like they had the same light direction on the frame. Some of them had the light here, some had it here, some had it here, and some had it here to kind of match and mimic where the light was coming in. But you get to dictate which angle the light is coming in and which direction it's coming in. But know that, watch this, if we bring this up here and we have this direction set to up, it appears as if the image is being carved into. But if we make the light different right here, now it appears as if it's popping out. And then when we click down, now it appears as if it's being carved into. So the direction of your carving is dictated by the direction of the shading. And this is really crazy because we actually took our card when it came in and I turned it upside down. And when I turned it upside down, it went from an inlet looking frame to a popped out embossed frame. It's a kind of weird play on, on your eye on how this stuff works. 
So then one of the next things I'm going to do is I'm going to add a texture. And with these textures, there's all kinds of different patterns that are already preloaded right here into Photoshop. I'm going to select something that's got a very small pattern so that it doesn't appear like it's overtaking the entire frame. So this one looks good. This one looks good. And this one looks good. I like, I like anything that's just got these little small pits. You can also make, uh, what looks like wavy lines. Uh, maybe you have some other textures that you want to import in here and that's fine. You can do that as well. I'm going to choose one of these textures with these small pits and small pockets in there. Down here, you have the scale option and the depth option. When we increase the scale option. That's going to make our, our texture really large. Uh, and then when we decrease that. It's going to make it really small. So let's make it really large and let's look at the depth. So the depth is how deep that texture is. All right, so as we increase that depth, it's starting to overtake the depth of our bevel. So we don't want that. We definitely don't want that. But you can use this. This is a good idea to increase your scale all the way and then lower your depth as you go. So you can see just what's happening with the little depth inside your texture. And then we'll go ahead and decrease the scale way back down to something that's more uh, workable. I like it right about there. So at this point, we're practically done with our frame. There's just a couple other things I want to add to this. I'm going to put a drop shadow on there so that we have not only the drop shadow that we have um, for the frame and the backing, but also the drop shadow where the frame looks as if it's curling into the picture so that our picture appears like it's behind our frame. And the way we do that is you just grab this drop shadow and then you can go ahead and maneuver this if you'd like. You can press that use global light option if you want to. But like I said before, that might mess up your whole composition. So if we go back to our bevel and emboss and see where the light is coming from, it appears as if the light is coming from down here. But then if we look at how our, our bevel direction is, this is set to down. So actually it looks like the light is kind of coming from this direction, uh, kind of coming in from this way. So when I go to that drop shadow, I'm just going to go ahead and move this down to about like this and that should be good so our highlights are here and then our drop shadows in here but notice even when we added that drop shadow now it appears like our frame is popping out towards us it's such a light trick it's really interesting so if we change this to up now it goes back to where it was it's 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 really just a play on our eyes and how our eyes read light and shadow so it might be playing with you completely different than it's playing with my eyes but that's what i see and that's what i'm going to talk about as i go through here the last thing we can do with this if we wanted to is we could change the color of the frame and all you have to do here is just press color overlay. So if we wanted this to be a white frame, maybe we wanted to go for a black frame or um, I'd probably go for something a little bit lighter than that, maybe in the grayish, dark grayish frame. If you want to do that, we have our red frame for our Christmas. Again, I'd probably go for something a little bit darker. Um, it's not quite a full saturation color. Uh, if you wanted something more on the lines of gold, you could do something like this. Um, so, I mean, really, it's up to you what you want to do with this. I'm not going to put a color overlay on there because I kind of like that brown color that we have with our image. So let's go ahead and look at what we did. We uh, put this picture into uh, the frame by making that uh, that mask here. So if we press and hold shift on this mask, that, that shows us that we made this mask so that we could fit our picture into our frame. And then we made our frame. And the way we did that is we added, we just made that regular old shape, that boring old shape in Photoshop, added a bevel and emboss, and then a drop shadow. So the really cool part about this is now that you have these effects here, watch what happens when we do this. We'll just take the eyeball off of here. We'll go back to that section where we have our frame. So we'll go to our uh, custom shape and then click inside here and go back down to where our frames were. So if our frame is, let's say we'll grab, uh, let's grab this frame right here. Okay. So now if we make this shape for this frame, we can now I'll just move this real quick and I'll just show you something. Right click right here, go to copy layer style and go to paste layer style. So now all those layer styles that we did with this one can now be reproduced on multiple other frames. If you were to have more frames in this image. So this is just a quick little tip on adding depth and dimension to things that don't have depth and dimension traditionally in Photoshop. Not very hard to do. You just have to know where to do it. Thanks again for watching. Again, my name is Blake Rudis with Everyday HDR and HDRinsider.com. And if you like this, please comment, share it, and more importantly, utilize it. Take this information and utilize it so that you can be creating more realistic looking composites when you're building out your uh, family Christmas card, if that's what you so choose. Thanks very much.